is truly alarming. To increase profits, China's unregulated medicinal herbs and supplements industry has been recently exposed. From toxic goji berries to counterfeit angelica root and fake medicinal herbs, it's no wonder traditional Chinese medicines are being criticized for ineffectiveness. There are also issues of sea cucumbers dyed with ink to appear darker and abalone soaked in chemical solutions. For years, food and medicinal safety in China has only worsened. Shockingly, 90% of the traditional medicines produced in Bozo Anhui, known as China's medicine capital, are found to be substandard. It seems counterfeit technology has been increasingly refined. In a seafood processing plant in Dalian City, workers are brazenly adding unidentified chemical powders to enhance the appearance of abalone. These golden abalones are soaked in this chemical solution for two to three days. To ensure that each abalone absorbs the solution fully, workers frequently stir them in the process. Quick, spray more solution on them. What is this? It's the solution we use to soak the golden abalone. Sea cucumbers are naturally green. After boiling them, we soak these green sea cucumbers in ink to turn them black. After processing, even the workers admit they wouldn't dare eat the abalone and sea cucumbers. One brave Chinese journalist secretly collected samples of the powder used for soaking the golden abalone and sent it to a professional lab for analysis. The results were infuriating. The powder contained toxic borax, a banned substance. Consumed borax accumulates in the body, potentially causing poisoning and damaging multiple organs. Despite the health risks, these golden abalones have high sales online, generating huge profits for the seafood processing plant. It's not just golden abalone, premium sea cucumbers are also victims of beautification processing. In the eyes of many consumers, dark colored sea cucumbers, especially those grown in the deep northern seas, are considered more nutritious. However, deep sea cucumbers have a long growth period, which isn't profitable for companies with unethical motives. So how can they make sea cucumbers look like deep sea products, appeal to consumers' expectations, and still save time? The answer? A disturbing tech solution. Dying. In a Dalian sea cucumber processing plant, cheaper, low-quality sea cucumbers with a greenish hue are dyed to fetch higher prices. After several processing steps, these sea cucumbers are transformed into visually appealing black ones. The same fraudulent practices also frequently occur with traditional Chinese medicines. A person shared online that they bought a package of goji berries from a local supermarket, intending to use them for health purposes. However, after consuming them, they felt a burning sensation in their throat. Suspecting something was wrong, they tested the goji berries with a kit purchased online and discovered they were indeed toxic. Video footage shows the sulfur dioxide levels in these goji berries almost reached the maximum allowable limit. In September, the city of Jingyuan gained attention. Jingyuan is famous for its production of goji berries, which is recognized as one of China's seven nationally protected geographic products. However, on September 1st, China's broadcaster CCTV Finance exposed a shocking story about goji berries processed with excessive sulfur in Jingyuan. Are these goji berries smoked with sulfur? The color looks so nice, so pretty. How much can these goji berries sell for per pound? They can go for around 15 to 18 yuan per pound. How much sulfur is used in a dyeing process? Around 10 pounds maybe? They're smoked in the dye room overnight, sealed up, and the next morning, the smell is aired out, spread out, and dried, ready to be sold. This kind of industrial sulfur is quite common. And how much does this cost per pound? Around 1 to 2 yuan per pound. Does this stuff have any harmful effects on health? Yeah, it can cause suffocation. During an undercover investigation, a Chinese journalist noticed an unusual structure in a villager's yard, a small plastic-covered shelter, much shorter than typical greenhouses. Curious, the journalist patiently waited until midnight, ensuring no one was around, before approaching the shelter. Inside, she found the ground covered in yellow hue. As she entered, an overpowering, pungent chemical smell made it hard to breathe, causing her eyes to water intensely. Forced to leave and wait for the fumes to clear, she re-entered later to find goji berries with an unnaturally vivid color, 
appearing almost too perfect. Shocked, she realized this simple treatment had transformed the berry's color dramatically. Despite the bright appearance, the berry still emitted a strong chemical odor. Nearby, she found a large bag labeled industrial sulfur with a warning in small print, strictly prohibited for food and feed processing. The undercover journalists realized that these goji berries were likely being illegally dyed with industrial sulfur, a dangerous and unlawful practice that poses severe health risks. This issue demanded further investigation to uncover the extent of the serious food safety threat. The journalist was shocked to find that sulfur fumigation of goji berries had become an open secret among merchants. They even acknowledged it. When asked about the health risks, several sellers unanimously agreed that sulfur fumes could cause suffocation. To meet the color standards set by buyers, villagers would dry the goji berries during the day and fumigate them at night to ensure they met the required appearance. Besides toxic goji berries, many other issues plague the Chinese medicinal herb industry. Towards the end of 2023, in response to complaints about the difficulty of distinguishing real from fake herbs online, a journalist investigated Bozo on Hui, the largest hub for traditional Chinese medicine in China. The investigation revealed that many e-commerce vendors sourced the medicinal herbs from Bozo. Driven by high profits, some vendors resorted to buying cheap or low-quality herbs, even mixing in counterfeit products, which they then sold online. For instance, some vendors use low-cost herbs like Angelica Biserata as a substitute for authentic female ginseng. Not only is this fake ginseng ineffective for treatment, but it also poses a health risk due to the heavy sulfur fumigation used during processing, resulting in sulfur dioxide residues far above national safety standards. Female ginseng, known for its blood-nourishing and pain-relieving effects, is a staple in traditional Chinese medicine formulas. In the Bozo market, authentic ginseng costs over 100 yuan per kilogram. However, even this price only covers broken pieces, which lack visual appearance crucial for online sales. To cut costs, some suppliers use Angelica Biserata that is just a fraction of the price. A Bozo merchant specializing in Angelica Biserata admitted that vendors often buy from him to pass off as ginseng with one seller moving as much as 10 tons a month, specifically to sell it as ginseng online. A source that tipped off the journalist revealed that a store in Bozo has sold over 84,000 units of fake ginseng, deceiving thousands of customers. The journalist then ordered a female ginseng from this store, and expert analysis confirmed it was indeed counterfeit. Lab results also showed that the sulfur dioxide levels in the fake ginseng far exceeded national safety limits. According to the Chinese pharmacopoeia, sulfur dioxide residue in medicinal herbs should not exceed 150 mg per kilo. However, the journalist's sample contained 429 mg per kilo, exceeding the limit by 1.9 times. A seller noted that those familiar with herbs can spot the fakes, but regular consumers wouldn't notice. Buying authentic herbs online is really a matter of luck. On a popular e-commerce platform, a store selling fake spine date seed has sold over 300,000 units. Spine date seed is a traditional Chinese herb used to calm the mind. Its cultivation and processing are complex, leading to high prices in recent years. During an investigation at a Chinese medicinal herb market in Bozhou, a journalist found merchants selling counterfeit spine date seed made from hyacinth beans. A vendor from Bozhou's medicinal herb market explained that even the cheapest spine date seed sells for over 800 yuan per kilo. For buyers looking for a cheaper option, he offers a substitute made from white hyacinth beans, which resemble spine date seed in shape but are lighter in color. To make them look more like the real thing, the beans are cooked and then dyed. The journalist also identified a top-selling spine date seed vendor from Bozhou on a major e-commerce platform. It has over 300,000 units sold but after ordering a 500 gram sample, expert analysis confirmed it was actually dyed hyacinth beans. This isn't the only store selling fake products. Several others were also identified, with the combined sales estimated to be near 400,000 units. Another herb commonly faked is Codonopsis root. 
Buying Chinese herbs online is just outrageous. Today, I received the Codonopsis I ordered from Pinduoduo. At first glance, it does look a lot like it, just a bit smaller. But when we look closely, the flesh part is red. I tasted it, and it isn't Codonopsis. It's Sila root. Real Codonopsis has a sweet taste, while Sila root tastes bitter. Comparing it with real Codonopsis from home, you can see the real one has yellow skin, white flesh, and a yellow core. The characteristics are very clear, but this fake one has red flesh, so it's an adulterated version. There are also counterfeits of Cornus officinalis, also known as Japanese Cornelian cherry. Fake Chinese medicine herbs are seriously outrageous. Let's take a look. First, we see preservatives being used to add weight. Then, the color of this cornelian cherry is overly vibrant, which suggests it probably has been dyed. When I grab a handful, it feels sticky, likely from added sugar. A quick taste confirms it. It's somewhat sweet. Comparing it with genuine cornelian cherry, you can see the authentic one is a purplish red, not as bright, has no impurities, and tastes sour. This makes it clear that the one bought online is fake. Regarding the revelations in Chinese media about toxic goji berries and fake ginseng, some people believe this is just the tip of the iceberg, as there's no limit to human greed. A longtime insider in the industry said, "The media has exposed toxic goji berries, but within the industry, using sulfur fumigation is actually considered mild. The law and pharmacopoeia set the lowest standard for herbs, but today I'm revealing the limits of human decency." Let's start with a rule that if it's not explicitly banned, it's fair game. Last year, Rosa's spine date seed topped the list of failed herb inspections. You might think I'm exaggerating, but here's proof. Why do some pharmacies openly sell fake spine date seed? Because there are manufacturers behind them specifically making counterfeit products. Everyone knows that Shandong produces the best red sage root, but dyeing red sage root from other regions to make it look like Shandong's has become so common that even experienced sellers can't tell the difference after 10 years. Think commonly used herbs are safe? Some magnolia berries look vibrant because they're soaked in oil to enhance color. Rimania root is sometimes mixed with Jerusalem artichoke and oil, and even lab tests can't detect it. One of the most troubling issues is blueplurum root. Typically, only the root is used, but mixing in parts of the stem is easy to disguise. Longu herbs are adulterated with heavy powders to increase weight. And here's something unbelievable. Even snakeskin can be fake, with DNA tests being the only way to verify authenticity. Just search failed herb inspections and you'll see new cases surface every few days. There are many more methods, like counterfeit edible bird's nests and fake ginseng certificates. Some are too shocking to even discuss. From melamine lace milk powder, gutter oil, Sudan red dye, and methanol lace alcohol a decade ago, to recent scandals like reused cooking oil in food production and counterfeit Chinese medicinal herbs, China's food and drug safety issues have become increasingly complex, challenging public expectations in unimaginable ways. China's pervasive food and drug safety issues have spread across all sectors, creating an almost unmanageable situation. This stems from structural problems, with food safety further complicated by institutional support from the CCP. Tang Hao, an associate professor at South China Normal University and Fulbright scholar, pointed out that a critical question underlies the issue. Why are companies, even well-established and registered ones, producing and distributing toxic food and drugs? He attributed this to structural economic challenges in China, where profitable sectors like energy, chemical, and telecommunications are tightly regulated to favor state-owned monopolies. This model limits opportunities for private and small businesses, confining them to a few sectors. In areas like food and medicine, with low entry barriers, intense competition has led to numerous low-quality operations lacking innovation, often driving companies towards unethical practices. Tang also noted that excessive competition causes inferior products to push out better ones while food and drug companies face heavy tax burdens and numerous fees. Various taxes, road and bridge tolls, and unique business charges further squeeze profit margins in China. Although government involvement in the market has boosted tax revenue, 
regulatory capacity has actually weakened. Despite adopting internationally aligned national standards, these detailed laws have failed to improve the deteriorating food safety situation. Tang highlighted that major flaws in top level decision making worsen enforcement at the grassroots level. He stressed that the current system shapes daily life, making food and drug safety not just an economic issue, but also a matter of regulatory oversight and the political and legal system. Tom believes that only major public involvement and systemic reform can truly address these problems, as a country with deep structural issues has no quick fixes.